Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. One of the hardest things that anyone will go through in their life is losing a loved one. Now, my first guest this morning, Elisa Bishop Becker, she knows firsthand just how difficult that can be. She's lost a daughter and other loved ones. She's also written a book on the subject of grief and loss. This morning, Elisa is going to talk with us about what happens when a person, they lose the loved ones, they accept it, but then ask the question, what's next? Alisa, thank you for being back with me today. Thank you for having me back. I really enjoyed it last time. Well, I did as well, and I learned so much from you, Alisa. And what we're going to focus on today, as I mentioned, is the acceptance stage. Accepting it, but then asking the question, well, what do I do next? Because right. it's not over. Right. And um, most people understand this Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's framework. They understand. They go through the five stages of denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And that's become so much a part of our culture that people who are grieving sort of expect to go through those things at this point. But then what I discovered, what happens, and it makes sense if you, th if you understand that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's theory was about people who were dying. Mm -hmm. So they were dying and then acceptance was the last phase for them. Well, mm -hmm. for people who are living, their mm -hmm. lives continue. Mm -hmm. And so the question that I started hearing that I experienced, of, of course, myself, but that I that really struck me when I started hearing it coming at me from clients was, now what? Mm -hmm. and, and that repeated over and over again. It was, such a, it was a common question. And what they were asking was, OK, I have come to this place of acceptance of my loss. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because they had a sense that there was more. Also, they usually had a sense that they were going backwards. Mm -hmm. And that was very upsetting. That was disappointing. They thought they had done it. Mm -hmm. They had, they had um, gotten to the place where they uh, thought they should be. And then they felt like they were revisiting those feelings of anger and guilt often. and. And, and it was confusing. Mm -hmm. So what was your advice then to them to, to get through this process? Really what they need to do is to go through, and you never, when you, this, the sense is going backwards, but it's not really. It's just revisiting some of the same feelings, but in a different way because you're in a different place. You've already gone through all those uh, experiences and what happens and it usually happens in the second year I had to make generalizations but uh, is you've gone through all of those experiences at all those firsts mm -hmm. of the first year without your loved one and you realize at a certain point that you're not the same person you were before and most of that second phase that I call the return phase is about discovering your new identity. So the first phase is about your loved one and their loss and, 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 and what that ha does to your life. The second phase is really more about you and how you figure out who you are after you've been through all these experiences that have changed you and have changed your world. Mm -hmm. So this could be a really positive stage, though, too, for people. I mean, you can't look at it negatively. Mm -hmm. You can really look at it positively and say, OK, I've changed, and now I'm going to continue to change and improve right. on exactly, who I am. Right, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. It can be very exciting. It, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's hard. It can be very, very hard. It's almost like I compare it to adolescence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what? Nobody wants to go through that again. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but it is. It can be a tremendous opportunity for you to reshape the direction of your life, mm -hmm. take everything that you've learned, and really create the life that you 
or a better life or and and a lot of people find their priorities have changed and that they've become wiser and better in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, so yes it can it can be very very positive mm -hmm. and another thing that people realize too I'm sure during this stage is just how strong they really are <laughs> oh well that's part of it mm -hmm. sure that's mm -hmm. part of it and that's part of what gives people hope because mm -hmm. they realize okay you know I never I, I've been through something I never thought I could get through mm -hmm. I just I could I never thought I could survive let alone thrive and mm -hmm. make 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 meaning out of now here I am and I'm I'm on my way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's keep going mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep going with this and see where it leads yeah, they're still alive and hey, they're doing positive things and making positive yeah. changes. And if you want more information on this subject, you can check out Elisa's book. Like I mentioned, it's all about grief and loss. And Elisa, thank you so much thank for you. being with me this morning. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> we'll talk more about this subject in a couple weeks, so you'll have to come back on. <laughs> okay, it'd be a pleasure. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a quick break this morning. I'll be back after these messages with travel expert Caroline Cotton. Stay with me, there's much more to come.